The Tragic History of the Resilient Ones Who Chose Death Over Slavery Some contemporary artists have also referred to the incident of the Igbo landing in their works. For example, in the Black Panther movie, Michael Jordan, also known as Killmonger, made reference to the Igbo landing during his death scene when he said, Why? So you can just lock me up? No. Just bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships. Because they knew death was better than bondage. <laughs> the Forgotten Story of Igbo Landing In 1803, 75 West Africans were sold into slavery. Each person was sold for about $100 to Thomas Spaulding and John Coor. A large number of the slaves were Igbos from the southeastern part of Nigeria. They were bought as slaves and the aim of the slave merchants was to transport them from their indigenous lands and resell them so that they could be put on plantations in Simon's Island to work. The West African slaves were transported through a popular ship known as Wanderer. After that, they were chained and put under the deck of a coastal vessel known as the York as it made its way to Simon's Island. The Rebellion as the ship approached Georgia, the Igbo slaves took over the ship and revolted. A fight ensued and it led to the death of the captain of the ship and some other crew members. The captives commandeered the ship and docked at what is now referred to as Dunbar Creek. As the slaves left the ship, they marched ashore and walked into the water in Dunbar Creek. They reportedly sang as they walked in unison into the creek, the water brought us, the water will take us home. Another account posits that when the slaves had a glimpse of the life of slavery that they were about to be subjected to, they instantly returned to Dunbar Creek and called on the water spirits to take them back to their land. Out of 75 people that walked into the water, about 13 bodies were reportedly recovered. Some people regained consciousness and were sold into slavery, while many of the bodies remained missing. According to the National Museum of African American History and Culture website, much of what is known about the Igbo landing was based on Roswell King's account. Roswell was a white overseer on a nearby plantation called Pierce Butler Plantation. Roswell helped in recovering some of the bodies and was the first person to record the terrifying incident. Roswell and another man known as Captain Patterson had recovered 13 bodies. William Main, another slave dealer, had explained how the Igbos took to the marsh and drowned. When faced with slavery as a choice, the group of Igbo people decided that the reality of becoming slaves in a foreign land was never going to happen. Despite being chained to one another, the decision was to walk into the ocean. Dunbar Creek on St. Simon's Island, where the victims died, has become a historic site also known as the Igbo Landing. It is the site of one of the largest mass suicides of enslaved people in history. Through the years, so much doubt has been cast on what actually happened and various myths have evolved. Some of these myths are those of the water-walking Africans and the myth of the flying Africans. However, a post-1980 research has verified Roswell King's account of the story through the use of modern scientific techniques and the confirmation of the factual basis of the long-standing oral accounts. Bury me in the ocean with my ancestors who jumped from ships because they knew death was better than bondage. Thank you for watching. Subscribe.